Hello, it's uh, Michael Bostrikir here in uh, Lviv, Ukraine, and uh, as you can see, I'm here in front of the humanitarian hub. This is where a lot of people um, come for uh, goods, food, um, bits of clothing, and um, where a lot of this stuff is dropped off. I'm not going to zoom in too closely out of respect for the people who come here, um, but I gotta say, it's like a split screen between here where you see a lot of desperation and then if you walk down you know maybe <clears throat> six minutes down the street you see the um, what I call the well-resourced folks um, from Kiev and other places of Ukraine who come here by car um, with quite a bit of money and uh, waiting out uh, the violence uh, back in the um, eastern part of the country just before coming out here, I uh, saw reports from Borispol, which is uh, just uh, east of the international airport outside Kiev, uh, where the mayor there has advised everyone to leave as, uh, as the violence grows closer. Uh, there's also uh, a lot of discussion now about how poorly the Russians are doing on the battlefield. and. Um, fears, as I said on CNN today, I'll play the clip right now, on uh, them resorting to missiles, uh, long-range missiles, to um, inflict even greater damage. So here's that clip right now. You have a fear that the deliberate suffering being inflicted in Mariupol might be repeated in other parts of the country. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I spent a lot of time in the Donbass behind the front line there, and we saw with our own eyes uh, the Russian-backed thugs and what they're capable of doing. And I think this what we're going to see, sadly, is the Russian playbook being played out again and again and again until they're stopped. And that is a lot of use of these unguided uh, weapons to pound uh, these communities into, into submission. Uh, but I think the West still has an opportunity now to intervene before we see a more massive slaughter of people. Um, tomorrow, actually, will mark, hard to believe, one month since the... Russian invasion of Ukraine began, uh, thousands of dead, uh, thousands of injured, a lot of them women and children, and among the most uh, dire humanitarian situations you can imagine in places like Mariupol where, as I've already uh, spoken about, where people are forced to kill stray dogs uh, for food. Uh, they're forced to melt snow for water uh, water sources have been damaged, agriculture has been damaged. These are all grave violations of uh, humanitarian law as outlined by the ICRC in their most recent document. Also, uh, interesting, the, and I don't know quite how to explain it, but here's just a truck that pulled up with more supplies. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but the uh, number of people crossing the border into Poland has almost halved. It's actually nearing the normal numbers, pre-war numbers. Um, this could reflect the fact that most of those who felt the need to cross have already crossed, or that um, there is a bit of a pause. People are waiting to see what happens. Uh, a lot of people are choosing to stay here in Ukraine in relatively safe areas like this. So. Uh, that's something I'll be looking into more, uh, but uh, I, I understand that the weights of the border have gone down to much, much less than they were before. Easier to get onto trains and buses as well. Uh, that's about it on this uh, Tuesday. I'm off to uh, participate in a London online frontline panel on the war in Ukraine. And then don't forget, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, I'll be hosting a Twitter Spaces. You don't have to be a member of Twitter to take part. Um, this will be at 1 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. London, 7 p.m. here in Lviv and Kiev. And we're going to have people right on the front lines. Um, Olga Rudenko um, and her colleague Ilya Ponomorenko, uh, her colleague Ilya from the Kiev Independent, the new startup, which has done fantastically well. They're going to be talking from uh, Kiev and from areas nearby. And then also I've invited uh, my dear friend Isla Yakli, uh, from, who writes for the FT and Political Europe and other publications to give us a regional perspective from Istanbul. And I'll be giving uh, a bit of my own perspective as well. So 
uh, Twitter spaces, uh, links on my Twitter feed and on my Facebook. We'd love to see you there. Uh, take care and stay safe. Michael Bostecu, Senior Fellow at the Atlantic Council, Global Affairs Analyst and co-host of the podcast, vodcast, Global Impact, signing off from VOV Ukraine.